Good morning. After the long ride last week, which I filmed picking up the Ducati, I've taken it on a nice little ride with Danny, actually, for a Saturday morning ride. And this will be the first time today that I take Monica. So we're going to go somewhere into the countryside, two up on the bike, quad lock set up. But before I do that, I've read somewhere on a forum, there should be a USB port somewhere here. I'm hoping so I can actually charge the phone while riding. This is a brand new bike, bear in mind, 2023. So my guess is, ah, I was about to say it must have one. Is that it there? Or am I about to pull off some sensor? No, nope, that's it. Okay, so it's under the seat. At least it's got one. Let's see how accessible this is. I'll tell you what, they don't make it easy. So if you want to charge your phone, you do have to, oh, there we go. Take off the seat, which to be fair to Ducati is extremely easy. But then you need to make sure if you've got a long one, because look at that. Oh no, that doesn't look right. That doesn't work. So charging your phone while on the Ducati, not going to happen. Luckily I'm well organized, so I've charged the phone beforehand. Okay. We'll saddle up, not charge the phone while riding, and head off into, Monica's found this spot, a beautiful little spot in the Suffolk countryside. This is just in the middle of the Suffolk countryside. Nothing around it at all, country lanes everywhere. You have to turn into what looks like an industrial estate, go all the way down to the end, and you've got here, lovely coffee shop, they do food, and a really interesting list of different companies. And this is just perfect timing, because I was about to say there's a car modifying place somewhere here. And that could not have been more perfect timing, because there are, I think, two or three different performance modifying shops around here. I have to just point this out, Monica, because Monica was pointing this out here. These offices made out of old crates, one stacked, not quite on top of the other, creating a little terrace area on top. That's just the perfect office. I think the ground floor is storage for stock, and the top is actually the office section. I was having a look at this place because I thought, this, this is too open and flat an area. It must have been some sort of old airfield because this area in Suffolk, or Suffolk, full of old military history. And it does turn out that I can see the lorries over there have the word Debak on the side of them. And I'm quoting here from 493 Debak. D 
Diebach was one of the last 8th Air Force heavy bomber stations occupied by the US Air Force. Sorry about the wind, it is blowing a gale today. The pronunciation of Debak was always a problem for, and I'm quoting, the uninitiated Americans who invariably referred to it as Debark. However, locals have always pronounced it as Debage. This was actually 1944-1945. It was used as a heavy bomber location for the US Air Force. After that, for three years, 1945 to 1948, right here, this was a prisoner of war camp. It's really interesting. So I think there's a huge runway or the remnants of a runway over there somewhere, but I think they dug it up and used it to build roads. And over there somewhere, there are still a certain amount of, I think, aircraft, tanks and things like that. It's a good spot, very nice spot, middle of the beautiful countryside. Oh, and the food. Avocado sandwich. I mean, I haven't tried it yet, but it looks perfectly good. And if you like it, table tennis table over there. And also, Monica, pan to your right a bit more. There's a pizza oven as well. And if you're lucky, there'll be a good selection, I think, of special vehicles driving past, because somewhere around the back, I'm sure there'll be loads of performance vehicles. Wow, I think potentially, potentially, this could have been one of the runways here. And just behind here, this, this would be the old, what do you call it? Communications tower for the runway, the airstrip here, all the way back from the mid 1940s when this was a US airbase. Look at it, just one building there in the field. And this, what I'm guessing, could well be potentially the exact road or runway leading down there, right here, still intact. Incredible, I can see another couple of outbuildings there. And the great thing about areas in Suffolk, not much really has changed. It's still wide open scenery, so it's completely unspoilt. You get a really good impression of exactly what it would have looked like about 65 years ago or so, i.e. almost exactly the same. There's a colossal, colossal amount of tech on this bike and because during the review I don't want to go too much into tech because honestly I, I just don't spend any time on tech. I wanted to show you what the MPG is on this bike because I've got a feeling it will be pretty good. But I've just spent the past eight minutes trying to figure out where the MPG is and I can't. But what I will do is just show you a bit of this, what you get from a new 2023 bike. An endless list of things that you can do. You can change all elements of, of the display, trip computer, you can see going back there, riding modes, I think you may even be able to adjust you've got sport road okay just two riding modes press back service have a look at this press on service and i can see the vin number of the bike i can see the total mileage oil service and that the big desmo service i think if you're in the know with ducatis you will know that and tell me if i'm wrong that's around about a thousand pound service or so that's the big one that everyone fears Anything else interesting I can show you here? Fuel indicator, DRL. I have absolutely no idea what DRL means, but you just see the endless list of stuff. You can change even turn signals. I can decide if I want auto off, manual off, etc., etc. They are now proper computers, these things. You can change the units, the info. 
something about battery voltage. But there it is, proper TFT display. I think the last one of these, to the best of my knowledge, I actually tried out was from a, a big Triumph 1200, I think. I've also just noticed, look at this moniker. I mean, it's completely unrelated to bikes. I've just gone off on a tangent. Look at the pairs on this pear tree. I don't know why I'm thinking like this, but isn't it funny to think that very possibly this pear tree could have been around at the time when this was actually a potentially a runway in use. It just looks like nothing really has changed here. It looks like all of these trees would have been here during World War II and everything would have been exactly the same. I'll include this location in the written description because you have zero chance of finding this little place because there's no proper road to it. You have to go straight the way through a farmyard and there are just beautiful country lanes to get here. It's in the village of, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Bouge. So this is St. Michael's Church, Bouge. Population of Bouge, 26 people. The reason this is so difficult to get to, this was an estate church, meaning there's, well, the grounds of a huge manor house over there, and this church would have been part of that huge manor house, but that was knocked down in 1956, and it used to be owned by the Fitzgerald family. So, in the church, and in what I believe is the mausoleum at the end, you'll see loads of references to the Fitzgerald family because they were buried here and this was in essence their church so this would all have been their land and they would have they would have had their own church here inside I think I don't know if we can get in there but there is a 1000 year old I think it's called a, a baptism stand or something like that meaning that the original church here could well have been a thousand years old or so although 1850 the Fitzgerald family completely renovated and almost completely redid the church. But on this spot, I think to the best of my knowledge, a thousand years old. And I guess this is where a few of the Fitzgerald family would have been buried in this strange little outbuilding at the end. But population here, there are no buildings around, 26 people. 
Should we see if we can get in? Well, it's for one, it's stunning, isn't it? I mean, the the situation, the area around it is is as stunning as you could ever imagine. Check around the other side. Ah, this is the front. You know, it's a shame. In some churches in the UK, theft is now so ridiculously bad, they actually say, what is it? I think they say there is no lead in the roof. This just says thieves beware, but some actually advertise now, no lead in the roof, because some people come and actually steal the roofs off churches. It sounds completely ridiculous, but it's true. Ooh. I think, and I may be wrong here, so apologies if I am wrong, but I believe this, I believe it's this that could be a thousand years old. I believe from what I've read. So this could have been part of the original structure, this stone thing that, apologies for my lack of knowledge, but maybe this is used for baptisms or something like that. Beautiful church. And it's true. These are, the majority of these plaques around here, all testaments, plaques for the Fitzgerald family. Every single one of them. So, for example, this is Augusta Jane Fitzgerald, wife of XXXXXXX. There's another one, and here's another one. And they're all dated around about 1850, 1880 or so. This is Mary Frances Fitzgerald. They were all from, by the looks of things, Waterford in Ireland. And this says here that she inherited a huge estate. I've added huge, but a substantial estate in Northampton. So clearly, they were a family with a colossal amount of, of money and land about 150 years ago or so, because that one, that one, this one, and that one, all in reference to the Fitzgerald family. The lighting's also very strange. I don't know if it picks it up, but when the light clears from the clouds outside, it's incredibly light in here. And then within about three seconds, it goes into almost complete darkness where you can barely read about two meters ahead of you. Right now, clearly the sun it's behind the clouds. Oh, it's a magical place. We've just seen a couple of pheasants running in front of us and there was a deer, a deer standing right here, just looking at us for about 10 seconds. I've just spotted the wall of the old manor house. It was knocked down about 60 years ago or so, but this would be, my guess is, the original wall surrounding the manor house grounds. And somewhere in there, in there would be, I guess, a new building that's taken its spot. It seems a shame that it was knocked down, but such is life. Country lanes, little tracks like this, the Ducati comes into its own. This is the kind of area where it makes complete sense. It is light, beautifully handling, and incredibly, incredibly engaging. So we've got 20 minutes to get back. I will enjoy every single second of it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.